you stumbled into my kitchen again. It's Grandma Roseanne and I'm glad you're here because we're gonna make something scrumptious. Valentine's Day is just around the corner. And if you wanna make your sweetheart something amazing, we're gonna do it right here. If you wanna make someone, you wanna make them your sweetheart, you're gonna to wanna to make this too, okay? So what we're gonna make now is a chocolate molten lava cake. It sounds very, very difficult. If you go into a restaurant, they charge you quite a bit of money for it. You have to order it before your meal and there's a whole hoopla around it. It's super simple. Wait till I show you, you're gonna be so excited that you can do this. So a few steps in getting ready. First of all, you want ramekins and you want five and a half ounce ramekins. And as you will notice, I have two different sizes here. Unfortunately, I have two of these and two of these. That didn't work for four ramekins, but it's going to be okay because we're just going to use ounces in them. So we'll be able to calculate it so that they cook about the same. But if you have four of the same size, much easier. Then what I did is I very, very generously buttered these. Okay, you wanna have a lot of butter in there and that's going to be really important for the release of this cake. The other thing you're going to want is a casserole dish that's going to hold all four of those. So that is your prep work. You get that before we start. I've also got an oven that I have got going at 475. It's not there yet because I'm just preheating it. And then we're going to start on the cake itself. Here is, and I've already started it, I need two eggs and two egg yolks. So I have one more full egg to put in here. That'll give me two eggs and two egg yolks. And that goes right into my blender. You can do this by hand if you don't have a blender or if you don't want to get your blender dirty, you can do it by hand, not a problem. And to this, we're going to add three tablespoons of sugar. Now what you want to do with this is you're going to want to just whip it until it becomes very, oh, it works better if you put the bowl on the, on the little flotchies before you do that. Uh, there you go. So you're going to want to uh, just whip it until it becomes real pale yellow and real fluffy. So while this is creating its magic over here, come over here to the range top with me. What I have here is a double broiler. Now, when you're using a double boiler, the main thing is that you never want the top part of your boiler to touch the water, okay? And the way you make sure that that's going to happen or not happen is you pick up the pot. If there's water on it, like this one is, that's a little bit too much water, so I'm gonna dump a little bit of this out. So in here, I'm putting three and a half ounces of chocolate. You want a good chocolate. You can use the chips. I'm using uh, Garandali chocolate here. You can use this, or you can uh, just get the bar and break it up. But this is the only thing that we have available in our store. So you just put that in along with five tablespoons of butter. Now, if you would like to do this in the microwave rather than over a double boiler, you are welcome to do that. Now, I will also tell you, chocolate burns. And once it burns, you cannot get it back. It is done. I have, I have too many times tried to do chocolate unsuccessfully in a microwave, and I just, I, I can't do it. So for me, I'll take the extra little step, and I will just melt it in here. It melts so fast, so easy. And if you don't have a double boiler like this, if you don't have this, just take a little pan of water and put another bowl on top of it, and it does exactly the same thing. You don't have to have this piece of tool in here. You don't need that. But you want it to be all melted down to where it is beautiful. Now, while this is happening and the egg yolk is going, what I have read, now, I am not professing that this is true, but what I have read is that in some very fancy, high-end restaurant, the dessert came out and it wasn't cooked all the way, and when they cut it, 
it started flowing out of the middle. The chef didn't have time to put it back in and he told the waste staff, just tell them it's a lava cake. Hilarious. Now, I don't know if that's true, so if you have a better story than that, drop me a comment because I'd like to hear. All right, we are totally melted. Can I have you look at this? Totally melted. It only took just a couple of seconds to do that and no chance of it burning. Now, I want to check over here and see how our eggs are coming. They've got a ways to go. Do you have things like that happen in your kitchen? Oh my God, everything just went flying. All right. So. So can you take a look at this? And this is what they should look like. Very pale yellow, really, really fluffy, just pretty. That's what you're looking for. Now to this, we are going to add our chocolate. What is not to love about this cake? All right, let me get the last bits out of there, which I cannot do at that angle. So what we have done is we just added our chocolate. Now we're gonna mix it up. Look at how beautiful that looks. Just look at that. Oh, that's gorgeous. And that's exactly the way it should be looking. Now to this mixture, we're going to add our chocolate and it's four teaspoons of cocoa. And you do want to sift this. This is a very delicate cake and you just wanna take these extra little steps, okay? Doesn't take very long to do them, but it's really kinda of nice. Give it a little bit of a whisk. Just like that. And now we want four tablespoons of flour. And once again, please sift it. And if you watch my other videos, I always tell you, I never sift anything. I hate sifting. And if I'm talking cups of sifting, I don't like to do that. But when we're talking about a really small amount on a very, very delicate cake, I think it's kind of important. So we just sift that puppy in. And look at these big lumps. You don't want those in there. But we just smash them right through. Just like that. Okay. Now then, mix it again. My husband is uh, handling the camera. He says, I can't believe you're wearing that sweater. That is great. And I'll be crying the blues if I get plastered all over. I'll tell you that right now. One of the things I wanted to mention, I don't think if I did before, when you're using your chocolate, you're using bittersweet and you want 60%. That's the key in there. You want that 60%. Doesn't matter if it's in chips or if it's in a bar. of salt and that is really truly just a pinch I mean we're talking just a few a few grains of salt and then a teeny tiny bit of lemon no you don't want lemon vanilla teeny tiny like an eighth of a teaspoon And now we mix that puppy up. Now we're going to want to start dividing our mixture into our ramekins. And I have this <laughs> neat little thing where you just kind of squeeze it and it pours out. So I'm going to use that. But again, use a spoon or a ladle.
going to use a scale because I want these all to cook at the same time. If you have a scale, use it. Uh, if you don't have a scale, really consider buying one. They're really, really cheap. They're really, really good. And if you want to be baking breads or really delicate pastries, they're kind of nice to have, okay? So what I'm going to do is just fill this. I want them all about the same. So I'm going to do three and a half ounces. Adjustments have to happen. And this is gonna happen in your kitchen too. It happens in everybody's kitchen. It's just that when people are on YouTube, they scratch it and start all over again, or they don't admit it was a mistake. I admit it was a mistake. This is supposed to call for four ramekins, okay? This recipe will not, call, will not handle four ramekins. It handles two. So I don't know um, if there was a misprint, I hadn't used this particular recipe before. I've made this cake many times, but I haven't used this particular recipe. So what I'm going to do, because I have got them equally portioned here, they'll bake the same. Don't invite another couple over. <laughs> Don't do that. Just make this for you and someone special because you're not gonna have enough to feed everybody. What we do now is we're going to cover these. We're going to put them in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes, and then we're going to come back and bake them. And I have great faith that they're going to be excellent. So hang with me, okay? <laughs> these have uh, refrigerated for a half hour. I'll take the plastic wrap off the top. And then we're going to put them in our casserole. And now we're going to just add hot water. You don't have to have boiling water. I just happen to have a little teapot here that's working really well. You want this to come up about halfway up that ramekin. Just like that. Now we're gonna pop it into this oven that is at 375 and it's going to be there for um, 16, 17 minutes. And you'll want to check it. And what you do is you want to make sure that it's firm on the edges, okay? Then you're going to know it's right to pull out. So I'll be back in about 17 minutes and we'll see what wonderful things we have here. Be very careful as you're putting these in because you do have hot water and you're going into a very hot oven. So be very careful. All right, see you back in a little bit. I don't know why I thought I could do that with my hands. Mm -hmm. Let me shut my door because that little time you heard was my oven telling me that I had left the door open. All right, now this is looking really good. This is how it's supposed to look. So what we have to do is we need to leave it for about 15 minutes. We let it cool down that much. And then I will come back and we will unmold it and serve it. I will be back. Yep. Okay, here we are. And it's the, fi the finale, the finale of this beautiful dessert. The ramekins have cooled down plenty. You're going to want to take a knife and just go around the edges. You want to make sure that that little puppy is going to release all the way around. Then you will take a plate, put it on top. And wrap it. Now, 
on top of this beautiful little thing, we're going to just sprinkle powdered sugar. All right. Now then, for the taste. And if we have done this correctly, the, the, the lava will pour out. And if we have not done it correctly, we're going to enjoy a nice chocolate cake. So, come here, cameraman. Come here, look at this. Let's see if we have done this correctly. And we have molten. Look at that. Mm. That's the molten part right there. Do you see it all? Oh, mm. we did it perfect. And cameraman is saying, mmm, because he is a chocolate guy. All right, here we go. Powdered sugar, beautiful chocolate cake, beautiful lava, and a great bite. really good. I mean, really good, you guys. Go ahead. Give it a try. Think about, think about um, Valentine's Day coming up really quick, but I'll tell you, I have little grandbabies, and they just moved to Texas, and oh, it's breaking my heart. They're five, seven, and nine, and if they were here, I would make this for them, and that would make you a spectacular grandma. So enjoy, have fun, happy Valentine's Day to all of you beautiful people out there. Subscribe, please. Thumbs up if you liked it. Come back and visit me again. The ingredients are below and I love cooking with you. So thank you, bye. Oh my God, this is good. You want some?